Here we're told that a house is 28 feet wide, so this diagram here is a cross section of the house, and that's the 28 foot width there. The roof is inclined at an angle of 35 degrees as shown. So the pitch of the roof there is 35 degrees above horizontal. Find the length L of one of the diagonal roof beams. This is obviously something that we might need to know. If you're building a house, you need to know how long that board has to be because you might have to buy that board or cut that board to the correct length. So finding that length, obviously, a practical application here of trigonometry. Well, here's a right triangle. And we know the angle 35 degrees. And assuming that that's horizontal and that that's vertical, which is a pretty reasonable assumption, that means we have a right angle right there. And we're looking for L here, this length. And we know this length, because this is 28 feet all the way across. This length here must be half of that. So let's write 14 feet. And then what trig function do we use? Here's our right triangle. We have an angle, and we're dealing with the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So the cosine function comes to mind. The cosine of 35 degrees will be 14 feet divided by L. So rearranging that little equation algebraically to solve for L, L will be 14 feet divided by the cosine of 35 degrees. And the calculator tells us that's 17.1 feet. Now you don't typically buy boards that are 17.1 feet long, but you might find an 18 foot board and then cut it to the correct length. And here we have a hot air balloon. This is the balloon here and these are just some ropes holding up the basket down there and we're told that it's tethered to the ground by a 100 foot rope so that's the rope 100 feet long fastened into the ground at the bottom and the wind blows the balloon to the side so there's some wind blowing the balloon remember is lifted by a buoyant force because of the hot air inside it so the balloon is lifted up and if there were no wind this rope would just be vertical so the wind is blowing it to the side a bit so that it forms a 70 degree angle. The rope forms a 70 degree angle with the ground. We're told to find the horizontal distance along the ground from the point where the rope is anchored, anchored to the point directly under the balloon. So if we draw a line straight down here, we're trying to find this distance here. So that, that's what we're looking for. So let's... um. Let's mark that and let's give it a name. We'll just call it X. That's what we're looking for. X. Okay, so look at the right triangle. If this is vertical and this is horizontal, then we have a right angle. We have 70 degrees here and this side X is adjacent to the 70 degree angle. And the hypotenuse there, which we know is 100 feet, and if we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, then we can think about the cosine function. So in this case, the cosine of 70 degrees is the adjacent, that's x, over the hypotenuse, that's 100 feet. So it's x over 100 feet. And then this is easy. Rearrange that, x has to be 100 feet times the cosine of 70 degrees and that comes out to 34 feet and one more you are setting up a wind turbine and so here it is this wind turbine has these blades here which will blow in the breeze and inside this piece right here is a generator and so the, as the wind blows it turns the the generator and produces electricity but the wind blowing produces some lateral force on it which could pr put a lot of sideways stress on this pole so these guy wires here help it help anchor it to the ground and give it a little bit extra strength and stability so these are referred to in this problem as supporting cables and we're told that they're 8.2 meters long you see that 
written there. That's the length of each cable, 8.2 meters long. And they are anchored in the ground 3.5 meters away from the base of the tower. And we see that there. So 3.5 meters is this distance. And you can see we have a right triangle here. Assuming the ground is horizontal and the pole is vertical, again, pretty reasonable assumptions, that's a right angle. And we want to know the angle theta. What angle do the supporting cables make with the ground? So we're looking for theta. Well, here's theta. This side right here, 3.5, is adjacent to theta. And the 8.2 is the hypotenuse. And when you have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, then the cosine comes to mind. So we can say the cosine of theta is the adjacent, that's 3.5, over the hypotenuse, which is 8.2. And you could write 3.5 meters over 8.2 meters, but the meters will algebraically cancel out, and you'll just be left with 3.5 over 8.2. So you don't even have to write those. Theta, then, if the cosine of theta is 3.5 over 8.2, then theta will have to be the inverse cosine of 3.5 over 8.2. And on the calculator, that comes up to 65 degrees.